Hi, my name is EJ Massa. Air Joe has done it again. He sent me another thing. It's the Pizza Q Pizza Kit for Kettle Grills. Soon I'll be renaming this show Stuff Air Joe Sent Me. He sent a note with it. I feel bad for sending those crappy grills. This actually looks like it could be useful and may be interesting to review. From Joe. Thanks, Joe. How'd you know I liked pizza and grills? The only way this could have been more perfect if it came with a bottle of whiskey. Seems modestly priced, especially if you already have a Weber kettle grill. Now I've made pizza on the grill before with a slow and sear and a cast iron skillet, and it works fine, nothing mind blowing. My Weber Summit charcoal grill can get up to high temperatures, so it's amazing at making pizzas. This is like the budget option. Not everyone can afford a Weber Summit charcoal grill. Not everyone makes mad flow like me. And by flow in this case, I mean money. I guess that means I have so much it, it flows like a river, mad flow. Anyways, here's a diagram of roughly how it's put together. It comes with a pizza peel, so that's exciting. I never had a pizza peel before. Now I can peel pizzas just like my Italian ancestors. Or else, that's what I assume they did. And it notes that it fits 18.5 and 22.5 inch kettle grills. Disappointingly, this company hails from California, so there's no hilarious English like the previous grills. And it says that it has European flavor elaborate buildup. They seem to have a mastery of English, elitist Californians. Opening it up and you have a ton of metal pieces and probably the most important bit being this pizza stone. Everything requires some assembly, including the pizza peel which you have to screw in. Directions seem pretty straightforward. It says it takes 20 minutes to assemble, but because I'm an idiot, it took me roughly 25 minutes to assemble. Look, I'm used to cheap grill instructions. They didn't even tell me what to do with my barbecue bowel. Make sure the charcoal bowel stretch into the BBQ body. I got confused. In the end, you have three parts to layer in. You have a charcoal rectangle, you have this metal circle thing, and finally the pizza stone. Top it all off with a lid, and you have yourself an outdoor pizza oven. You'll notice I'm giving my Black Weber kettle grill some love. It's the first grill I ever owned, so I'm kind of sentimental about it. You know, and I also use my Red Weber kettle for most things that I do, so I thought it'd be fun to keep my Black Grill a pizza oven. That way I don't have to, like, change out these accessories in my Red all the time. I like this little thermometer that tells you when you're in the pizza cooking zone. Highway to the pizza cooking zone. Now I'm gonna make a pizza. And I know, I usually make ribs when I review something. But today, I'm gonna do something different. I'm gonna make a classic margarita style pizza. I know, I know, I'm going against tradition. But you see, ribs have all these bones in them. And the last time I made a pizza with bones in it and served it to my family, you know, they didn't like it that much. They didn't appreciate it. They called the cops. I've made pizzas before, and in my last pizza video, I used store-bought pizza dough. But since I still have my sourdough starter from the sourdough bread video, I thought I'd make a delicious sourdough pizza dough. I'm using a recipe I got from King Arthur's website. It calls for one cup of starter, two and a half cups of flour, a half cup of water, a half teaspoon of active dry bread yeast, I'm using these Fleshman packets, and one teaspoon of salt. Although I felt this dough was a little too dry and I added almost a half cup more water. So I'm not sure if that's a, a typo in this recipe, but make sure you check to see if your, your dough is hydrated enough. Place the dough in a KitchenAid mixer with a bread hook and had it knead for about seven minutes or until it wipes clean off the sides. Put it in a greased up bowl, I sprayed it with Pam, and covered with some plastic. I allowed this to rise for four hours. Next, I'll also be making my own pizza sauce. Might as well, since I'm making the dough, might as well make the pizza sauce too. I have some of these peeled whole tomatoes in a can. I place them in the food processor without the sauce liquid from the can, along with a clove of garlic, and I gently pulsed it. Not too much, because I like it slightly chunky. And then I add a little bit of my special salt, pepper, garlic rub, which I like to put on everything. I'll put all the ingredients to this rub in the description below. I think it's a good, thing to have on hand. It's a good all-purpose rub. So just take all those ingredients, dump it into a shaker. You're good to go. And that's it. You could cook it on the stove and it'll bring out different flavors, but I think I'll let the oven do the cooking. For the cheese, I'm just gonna use some store-bought fresh mozzarella. I can't make the cheese from scratch too, you guys. I have my limits. You know? Can't do everything myself. 
And there's only so many hours before eternal darkness consumes me. Oh, here it is. I cut up the mozzarella into little discs. Some people say tearing mozzarella is better for pizza. But I like to cut things. Don't make me stop. Four hours later, my pizza dough has at least doubled in size. I oiled up a pizza pan daintily with a brush and dumped my dough onto it. I cut in half because this is enough dough for two pizzas, so I'll put the other half of dough away in the fridge for a pie for another day. I loosely cover the dough in plastic and will let it rest for 15 minutes. And then using my gentle little kitten paws, I stretch the dough into the corners, letting it rest for another 15 minutes. While that was going on, I heated up a chimney full of charcoal. Then I dumped the lit charcoal on the edges on the side of the rectangle grate thing, which was against what my brain wanted me to do, which was to dump it right in the middle of the rectangle. Like a soccer ball going into a goal. It just seems right, but nope. Then the all important pizza stone goes in, then the lid. Then we wait for the thing to come up to the pizza cooking zone. Highway to the pizza cooking zone. I got out a ladle of sauce, maybe around three to four ounces, nothing much, and spread it around the dough. Then layered on my mozzarella slices, and then it's off to the grill. I place the pizza right on the pizza stone. Now I know what you're thinking. EJ Massa, you brutish ape of a human. How come you didn't use the pizza peel and put it directly into the oven and onto the pizza stone with that? Well, off camera, I may have tried a few times and accidentally made a few calzones, so I'm not very talented. So I'm just gonna use the pizza pan. I did, however, use the pizza peel to help get the pizza out and give it a few turns while the pizza is baking. Oh, and this did come with a little piece of material called a flex door, which is supposed to make preheating quicker and make for more even cooking, but I didn't use it. And half the fun of brick oven style pizza is turning the pizza around, right? I definitely feel like my ancestors, you know, drinking wine in the breeze, turning pizzas, doing this, doing this with my hands. Approximately 10 minutes later and we got a beautiful pizza. Oh, wow. I love pizza. I'll put some fresh basil from my garden on top because I've seen stock photos that look like this and you should get all of your recipe tips from stock photos. Now it's time to try a slice. Oh, yes. This is great. There's no pooling of liquid in the middle. The sauce tastes nice and fresh. Funny coming from canned tomatoes. The cheese also has this nice, light, refreshing taste. And the sourdough crust has a crunch, but also has a great fluffy texture. It reminds me of a very decent brick oven pizza place. So in the end, do I recommend this device? Well, I can't say. I haven't made ribs with it. So take my advice here with a grain of salt. But I did have a lot of fun with it. And actually, Afterwards, I made this pizza again, but just in the oven and same recipe and it didn't come out quite the same It didn't have that, you know, the brick oven taste of the, that. I think the high heat gives it, you know, it's kind of like a burnt crisp taste um, You lose that when you don't use this kind of style of it. I made a superior pizza using this grill device now it is a little clunky so if you only have one grill like a peasant you're probably gonna be annoyed by taking it apart all the time and trying to store it. Like, I have so many stainless steel grill attachments around, so I'm just gonna keep it in my black grill as a permanent outdoor pizza oven, basically. But maybe you want a good pizza and you wanna cook it outdoors in the breeze, have a beer maybe, then man, this device might be for you. It's decent enough construction, it does what it says it's supposed to do, and it's for a pretty good price. So that's all I got for today. Until next time, bye.